Hi, what up everybody? Welcome to the part five homework, L, N, and E. Let's hop to it. So the first page here is actually really just all review, except I'm throwing all of these to be LN equations as opposed to uh, non-LN equations, just to get us used to using it. So I'm not gonna explain too much of this, uh, only the first couple of them really, and then I'm kinda gonna go a little bit uh, faster, pick up the pace, mainly because uh, we've already done all this stuff before, kind of in a previous video, previous homework assignment. First step, we know, recognize the minus sign in between, the negative sign, it means division. So my first step is to rewrite this as ln of eight divided by four minus two x equals one. After that, we have to remember that ln of x is the same thing as log base e of x. That's one of our key definitions I had in an earlier packet, the one that we had on the front page of this packet. The main idea is this guy right here has a mini e down there. So when I do my log loop, you know, starting here, it's like there's an invisible e down there. e raised to the first power is the inside. So we can say e to the power of one is eight, four minus two x. After that, um, we need to get rid of uh, fractions. And uh, to get rid of fractions, there are a couple of different options here. The easiest option of all is remembering a trick. When you have an x in denominator, you can actually flip over both sides of the equation. So you can actually like write it over one flip over both sides of the problem, rewrite this as one over e equals four minus two x, all divided by eight. And now I'm gonna do like half cross multiplying. It's not like an all the way cross multiply, it's only a kind of cross multiply. The eight comes up there, so the eight's gonna get multiplied up there. And the end result's gonna be eight divided by e equals four minus two x. After that, you want to subtract four on both sides. Oops. Divide everything by negative two. And when you divide by negative two, don't forget eight divided by negative two there is gonna be negative four over e. Negative four divided by negative two is plus two equals x. Please note, that was only one way to do the question. The other way to do the problem is to um, immediately take this four minus two x and multiply it up here and just do the cross multiplying and then um, distribute it out. If you did that, you'd get an alternative answer to this problem. You'd end up with um, negative four plus two uh, e all over e equals x. If you solve that problem that way, you might actually have an eight, a four, and then a two on the bottom. Uh, they're both correct. There's nothing wrong with doing it another way. It's just different algebra one approaches. Regardless, you need to get like to one of these two answers. If you are struggling with this portion of it from here, this is all algebra one stuff. So if you're really struggling with it, please come by like after school, I'll help you through it. Um, we'll, we'll tackle it together. And I will help you learn some other little tricks to going uh, through it. Let's go over number two. So number two, again, we see that subtraction, that means division. So we have the ln of uh, two minus three x all over 10, that's a minus sign, um, equals the ln of 19. And now that we have lns kind of uh, on both sides of the equation, we kind of just say, eh, they're gone. Two minus three x over 10 equals 19. Again, we wanna do that kind of half cross multiplying up there, the 10's going up to that 19. 2 minus 3x equals 190. Subtract 2 on both sides, negative 3x equals 188. And divide both sides by negative 3 and just leave it as this fraction here. You always need to double check plugging back into the original if it's okay to plug in and here it is okay to plug in because that's gonna be a positive overall. Let's move on to number three. So number three, again, we have this plus sign. The plus sign always means multiplication. So we're gonna do the ln of two x squared times eight is gonna be 16 x squared equals two. Again, 
ln means log base e, so it's going to be e to the second is 16x squared. e to the second equals 16x squared. Divide both sides by 16. And you're going to have um, e to the second over 16 equals x squared. Anytime you want to solve an equation like this, I'm kind of running out of room here, and I'm like really running out of room. I'm going to use a pink pen to divide this in half. Okay. Anyways, uh, so you got to take the square root of both sides of the equation. When you do that, you're going to have the square root of e squared over the over 16. Don't forget it's plus or minus, so you have a positive answer and a negative answer. And reducing that, the square root uh, goes to the top and bottom separately. And x is there for square root of e squared is just going to be e. Square root of 16 is 4. And then you also get the negative of that. And again, if you're confused from this step on, the rest of that's Algebra 1, so I really need to talk to you, help you out, give you some little tricks and stuff. Uh, come by after class, I'll get you through it. All right, problem number four over here. So problem four, we're going to go ahead and uh, the minus sign means division. So ln of x over 9 equals 4. Use our log loop, e to the fourth power is the inside. e to the fourth equals x over 9. Do our little half multiply, 9e to the four equals x. That's it. Number five. Number five is the same exact idea, uh, except backwards. We want to use our log loop. So we're going kind of like this step here, sorry and we're going backwards a step. So before we had e to the 4 is this guy. That's uh, a backwards log loop is going to say the ln of this side is the exponent. The ln of 72 equals n. And that's actually a one step problem. Nice and simple. Number 6 is super similar. We're going to do the ln of 9 is equivalent to the exponent. And now we divide both sides by negative 4, and you get the ln of 9 divided by negative 4 equals m. Keep on moving. Number 7. So number 7, you can't do your log loop until you have uh, gotten the little e part by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 6 first. So 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. Because that's uh, 3 divided by 6. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half log loop ln of 1 half is v minus 7 the exponent and add 7 to both sides now equals v whoops okay continuing on to number 8 first of all we got to subtract 2 on both sides we got to get that e by itself We need to do our little log loop. What the heck am I doing? There's no E over here. Oh my. I'm getting too tired, guys. I don't know if I'm going to last through this whole assignment. Whew. All right. 952. We can do this. All right. So there's no E there. It's just the exponent. Um, add 9 to both sides. And divide both sides by 5. We're all done. Same concepts with number nine over here. So uh, step one, we need to subtract two on both sides. Divide both sides by negative four. Log loop. Add 8 to both sides. And 
and divide both sides by negative 3. Easy enough. All right, moving on to the real questions. Oh boy, if those weren't the real ones. What is the real ones? We got word problems galore, baby. Oh yeah, here we go. Crystal's investing $6,457 in a retirement account with a fixed annual interest rate of 5% compounded two times per year. What will the account balance be after 18 years? Technically, this is actually a review problem and a review problem from back in December, but I wanna make sure that we're on top of it. So it's telling us right now that compounded two times per year, that's effectively saying in our APR formula that uh, N equal to two. So just as a reminder what the APR formula says, it says that our growth factor is equivalent to one plus R over N to the nth power so in this case, we have 1 plus 0 0.05, so that's 5%, by the way, so move the decimal over twice, you know, 5 over 100 is 0 0.05, that's what I'm doing there, uh, over 2, and the reason 2 is because n equals 2. 2, 2 times per year, just like this, and it wants to know what will the account balance be after 18 years. So just using my calculator, setting it up, let's make sure we type it in exactly as it appears. We could also use that Wolfram Alpha website that I showed you guys last time. One plus uh, 0.05 divided by two and raise that to the second power. And if we do that, we get 1.05625. That's a long number. So usually we wanna store this into our calculator as a letter of some kind. So let's go ahead and store that guy to, uh, I've been using letter B in class, but let's just use X because that's like the laziest thing we can do. So store to X, boom, now it's the X value. So we're storing that guy to X. What is this on my paper? Hmm, I don't know what that is. All right, anyways, so we're storing that guy to X and we have done only our growth factor. So every single one of these questions, um, as a reminder, is that we're gonna have a uh, F of, our value time is always gonna be equal to the initial value. And in this problem, the initial value is six, four, five, seven, multiplied by our growth factor, which I'm using a capital letter X for. And it needs to get raised to our value in time. In this case, our value in time is 18. So we literally just typed it into our calculator. Six, four, five, seven times x raised to, oh, it's like bright, times x to the 18. Boom, $15,706.88. Let's keep pumping these out here. How long has this video been going, 13 minutes? Probably want to go another 15 or so. I don't know if we're going to make it through. We'll see what happens. See what happens. All right. Number 11. N. Deba invests, invests $1,444 in a savings account with a fixed annual interest rate of 2% compounded 12 times per year. How long it will it take for the account balance to reach 1660.80? All right. So we know in this problem, again, that we have to use this general equation that we've been doing for a while. The f of t is the initial value times the growth factor to a power. So let's do our growth factor first. So our growth factor in this problem is going to be equal to 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 to the 12th power. So it's the same exact formula. Um, and again, we want to store that in our calculator. So I'm going to, I'm going to store it just, just because I feel like it. I'm going to pick a different letter this time. I'm going to store it to letter B because that's what I used in class or the letter base. Um, so right now in our calculator, we're typing in um, 1 plus, and I think in class I showed you the fraction button, the, that alpha y equal, equals enter. And of course, I added in an extra plus sign for no reason. Okay. Um, 0 0.02 divided by 12, and the parentheses, we're raising that to the 12th power, and we are storing that, the store button is down here. We're storing that to our 
letter B. And after storing that to our letter B, um, we need to raise it to uh, a new power and figure out what's going on with it. So our equation is going to be f of t is 1, 4, 4, 4 times b raised to that t power. So that's our equation in general for this problem. And they're asking, how long does it take to get to 1660.8? So that means that we're looking for time. We're trying to solve for that letter here. So 1660.80 is 1444 4, 4 times b to the t. So let's go ahead and divide all this in our calculator. We got 1660.80 divided by 1444, and it gets 1.1503. So I'm going to keep that number in my calculator, just chilling right there. You can actually pick a new letter to store it to if you really, really wanted to, but um, I'm just going to write 1.15 uh, dot, dot, dot equals b to the t. And now I need to do the ln of both sides of the equation. So I got to do the ln of this 1.15 dot 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 equals the ln of b to the t. t needs to come down in front. And then we got to divide both sides by the ln of b. And then we can finally figure out what our time is here. So we need to do the ln of this guy. So ln of the answer and divide that by ln of capital B. And 6.99999 looks like it's uh, seven years is how long it's going to take. So lots of stuff going on in that question. So let's review it one more time, exactly what happened. So we started off. Uh, realizing that it said compounded 12 times per year. We're using our APR formula where R, this 2%, gives you this 2. We're realizing that the N is 12, so these guys are both 12s right here. Um, and we put this into our calculator and stored this to the letter B. If you decided to figure out what this is, it's like 1.02018, something like that. After that, we set up our equation. It's always going to be of the form the function of time is equivalent to the initial value times our growth factor raised to some version of time. And uh, continuing on, we divided both sides by 1444. 4, 4. And when we did that, we left this number in our calculator. Uh, you could have rounded it, but you might have had a slightly different answer if we uh, had just used like the 1.15. Like just to show you like how off we would have been, it wouldn't have been by much. Like if we did the ln of 1.15 and then divided by um, the ln of, of B without doing any rounding, like it's barely any different. So if you want to just round, it's not the end of the universe. You'll, you'll probably still get the same answer. Um, anyways, we get this 1.15 is B to the T. To solve this, we need to, we could use a log loop. It's a little bit obnoxious to do that. So we usually use ln and that's how most books do it. So I, I want to continue doing it that way. So we the ln of both sides. The T comes down in front. And then we divided both sides. That t is coming down in front right there. That's the that's our exponent rule. And then divide both sides by the ln of b, and plug it into our calculator. Um, hopefully this isn't the end of the world because we got yes yet another one to do. All right, number twelve. Jessica invests five four seven zero in a retirement account with a fixed annual interest rate compounded three times per year. After 19 years, the balance reaches 16912.08. What's the interest rate? So it's super similar to all the questions we've been doing. I'm going to try to set it up in one step and see if it all makes sense. So we're going to go 16912.08 is equivalent to the initial value, 5470, multiplied by 1 plus. We do not know the interest rate. We just know it's an R divided by 3 and that is going to be raised to the uh, third power. And that whole thing is getting raised to the 19th power. 
Okay, so we gotta solve this equation. How in the world are we gonna do this? Well, we need to take care of this exponent over here, and we know we need to divide this guy. So we're gonna go ahead right away and start doing some division. So let's do that. Let's do 16912.08 and divided by 5470. Let's give us 3.09178. So 3.0917, uh, I'm gonna do eight, eight. I'm gonna do that many decimal places. It's arbitrary how many I'm doing. You can store the number in your calculator if it makes you feel better. And the, over here, the three and 19 are gonna get multiplied together to get one plus R over three. And then we're gonna do 19 times three, and that's gonna be 57. And now to solve this question, both sides need to go to the one over 57 power to cancel out that 57. So that number in our calculator, 3.09 dot dot dot, needs to get raised to the one over 57 power. And that's gonna be one plus R over three. I'm gonna do this at the very end. I don't feel like typing it in my calculator right now. I mean, I guess I can, right? It's not gonna be the end of the world. So raise that to the one divided by 57 power. I'm literally just typing an answer to the one over 57. I get 1.019999999. So let's just, uh, let's check 1.02. Let's be lazy about it. Um, it. Equals one plus R over three. Subtract one on both sides. That's gonna be 0 0.02 equals R over three. And therefore 0 0.06 equals R for a total of 6% multiplied by 100 to go back. Um, and if you did it in the calculator, you get like the exact value, like you wanted to be super duper exact, um, you would have subtracted one there and then multiplied by three. Oh, not my, no, adding three, multiplying by three times three. And you get a 0 0.0559 and then like times 100 even would still get you like a 5.9999% interest rate. It's gonna be, 6% is clearly going to be our correct answer here. All right, number 13. I think I'm gonna call it quits after this 13 actually. I think that's gonna be the amount of focus that any of us are gonna be able to, to do in a single night. Uh, we can do the rest of it at a different time. So Shana invests a sum of money in a retirement uh, account with a fixed annual interest rate of 3% compounded two times per year. After 19 years, the balance reaches 9,527.68. What was the amount of the initial investment? So I had one of those moments where I read the whole thing and I didn't process anything. So I'm gonna read it again. That happens, it happens to everybody. So we got 3% compounded two times um, we want the initial investment. So now we're like looking for, like in this equation, we're looking for that number this time right here. So we got 9527.68 equals, we don't know what this guy is. We don't know our initial amount. We use A with a little zero to denote that initial amount, multiplied by, and now we got one plus 0 0.03 divided by two to the second power to the 19th power. And what's nice about this question is because this is just multiplied, we can actually just do this divided by that and do it in one step in our calculator and just be done. You know, like you can literally type in that whole thing and be done with the problem. So I'm gonna do it. It's a one stepper. We got 9527.68. Divided by, and now I just need to be really, really careful with my parentheses. So I, if you notice in my problem, I got two parentheses there, but it's getting raised to that 19th power. So let's go three parentheses total. One, two, three. And we got one plus, and we got uh, alpha y equals enter uh, 0.03 divided by two. End the first parentheses, raise it to the second power and that parenthesis, raise that guy to the 19th power, and then end our third parenthesis that we're dividing by. And there we go, 541000. So that's actually just 5,000, oops, can't even read it, $5,411.
That was actually really, really easy once you set it up. Nice and simple. I'm still going to call it quits for today there. Um, and we will do the rest of this video right after. I'm going to do a separate video just so you guys can take a break, take a pause. That's my recommendation. Have a good one, guys.